cross of Calvary now as I present this message to the people. Amen. Amen. Verse 20, and he lifted up his eyes. This is speaking of Jesus Christ. What was he doing? He was looking down. There were many people around him. What are most of us doing when many people are around? We're looking at the other people because we're nosy. Curiosity killed the cat. But what was she? This is powerful here. Verse and he lifted up his eyes. His eyes were down. Receive what I'm saying to you. He was looking down. And there were many people around him as he was coming down for this sermon on the plain. He was coming down from the mountain from prayer. He lifted up his eyes. What does that tell us about Jesus Christ? I've already given you one idea. He was not a nosy person. What does it also tell us? He was humble. Jesus Christ was humble. Jesus Christ had a focus. He had a concentration. He was looking down. So imagine yourselves in a room and there are many people and you're all standing. You're looking at everywhere you can't concentrate because you will see someone you know and your mind will reminisce some history on that person. But Jesus was looking down. He had full concentration on what he was getting ready to say. I believe that is a message to you and to me. We need to gather our thoughts before we talk. We need to gather our thoughts before we talk because we're so on fire, including me at times, I'm ready to say it. But if we look down, is this the right thing to say? I've got something to say, but I want to make sure I'm saying it right. And you're not focused on people. I also consider looking down. He was in prayer. His eyes could have been shut. He was in prayer to the Father. I think that's very important for us. For us to be, to, to be able to focus properly, we need to have our eyes shut when we're worshiping. I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do. I'm just trying to share with you how you can get focused better. Even when you're getting ready to go through drama by a telephone call that's coming your way, it's sometimes best to keep your eyes closed so that you can concentrate on what needs to be said before you rattle off at the mouth as I've done. Because rattling off at the mouth can cause a whole lot of hurt and problems that I didn't intend to do, but it happened. There's so much we can gather and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples. This was his leadership. We should look to everyone we communicate with as they are important. Every one of you here today are important to me. I think about every one of you and your a picture of you is in my mind every day. And also 
some that are not here. Because most are here today, but some are not. I have a picture in my mind because I'm focused on you. I don't, I'm not so much good. I don't have time to worry with David Ray. My focus is intent on others. Yes, sir. I'm leading up to this scripture that's going to be unfolded here today. Yes. Blessed be the poor. That does not mean I don't have but ten dollars in my checking account. Amen. My, my, my. Has, because when you think about the word poor, you go straight to money. Poor represents blessed be those that are humble. You want to be blessed today? Be an individual that is humble towards other people. Wasn't Jesus Christ humble? Yes, he was. I mean to be in a crowd and he is looking down. He's humble because they could have hit him. But he was humble. For yours is the kingdom of God. Those that have a humble mental attitude will flourish in this life. Those that have an attitude of grace will prosper in this life. Amen. The proud don't go far. Amen. The proud do not go far. The proud will stump the toe. Jesus. And they won't even know they stumped the toe. Because of that ego that is operating in their brain. Mm -hmm. So, to be blessed is to be humbled. You don't have to have any money in order to be blessed in the eyes of the Father. Amen. 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 Money will get you in trouble. Amen. But the Father says the kingdom of heaven is yours because you're humble. Father, teach me to be more humble. Teach me to be more humble. Because I've known, I've got friends that used to be humble. Jesus. And, and the more increase in money, they changed. Mm -hmm. They're still my friend. Mm -hmm. But they didn't stay where I used to know them as. Jesus. So, so, when you receiving blessings, mm -hmm. and when you're receiving financial blessings and materialistic blessings, uh, you need to stay humble. Amen. Because others can see the change in the way you act. Mm -hmm. Amen. Stay humble. Yes. David Ray, stay humble. Yes. Amen. Mine's the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. It's the kingdom of heaven for you. You that may be despondent and, and stressed out today. The kingdom of heaven is yours if you'll stay humble. You are blessed. When others would talk negative of you, you can say, I'm blessed. Because I can go to Luke chapter 6, verse 20, and it claims I'm blessed because I'm humble where you're proud. That's scripture. I want us to receive that today. Get it in your mind and, and then let it, let, it, let it cultivate into the Holy Ghost. Let God minister to you right now. You are blessed. 
Jesus. Because you are humble. Yes, Lord. You're not a proud person. You're a humble uh -huh. person. Get it in there. Let it, let it like the wash machine washing the clothes. Get it all mixed up in your mind right now. Let it twirl around. Whatever you were thinking about, let it leave your mind right now. And let it get in there like the wash machine and let it stir and stir and clean you up in the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Preach, I don't like the wash machine because if I fell in it, it, it might mess me up. You know, there used to be some big wash machines at the laundromat. Yeah. You know, and then big dryers, and I always wanted to try to get in them. <laughs> As a little boy. I thought that was interesting. No. But you know, if you got in them, it would turn you. That's what we need to do in our minds right now. Let our minds be turned in the Holy Spirit. Where you're feeling low, be lifted up because you're humble. You're blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Because I'm humble where you're proud. And let it just churn in you right now. Here in Luke chapter 6, verse 20. Let it churn in you. Because the washing machine takes more than five minutes. Some of you have already in your minds, have already left what I just said. Hmm. You know why? Because you're, you are so heavy with this world, you don't know what to do. Holy Spirit's already told me who they were. You're so caught up in this world, you don't know what to do. You're so worried about other folks you can't even control. Amen. And you and and and, it, and now and you feel good for ten seconds, and then you're feeling bad again. You need to receive the scripture for what it is, and get your flesh out of the way. Your flesh is harming your relationship and your growth. With God. Blessed are you. You're blessed. When you walk, you should walk excited in God. Amen. I worship excited in God. It can be slow. It can be fast. But I know I'm blessed because I'm humble. Yes, Lord. And I take all of that and I'm thanking him. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 21. Luke 6, chapter 6. Blessed are you who hunger now. Oh, my. Your first thing come to your mind, my stomach is rising. I'm hungry. It has nothing to do with you get a hunger. That this hunger, blessed are you that hunger, those that are seeking right living. Amen. Righteousness. Amen. Which is the word of God. Amen. I'm Amen. seeking more of the word of God. Amen. Blessed are you who are hungry. Now, are you hungry this morning? Yes, sir. Oh, but are you, but I'm I must say this. But are you hungry for trying to, to be nosy to figure out what's going to happen this afternoon in some one of your family members' lives? <laughs> Most people are more hungry about what's going to happen this afternoon than they're concerned about what's happening right now. They can change their lives forever and forever and forever and forever because they're too much in the flesh. Come on, and I didn't mean to raise my voice. I'm trying in 2023 to be a little quiet. Jesus. Praise you, brother. I want to hunger for his righteousness. Yes, I want to hunger for more God. I don't know it all. But you know what turns me off? Is someone standing up to speak and they and they act like they know it all. That tears my nerves up. I start squirming, and and, 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 and and you know what I do next? I start hitting my wife. 
I tear my wife's side up in a service. <laughs> Haven't I hit you, baby? I'll tear your side up. Come down off your high horse. Come down off your high horse. Just because they have not received the word that you received does not mean you're better than they are. Amen. They're trying to hunger after more of God. They may have not received it in the light or the light that you have received it in, but they're hungry for righteousness. They're hungry for more of God. We have so much diversity in our ministry. We're in verse 21. There's so much diversity. I don't, I don't hold the pulpit. I don't hold the programs because everyone has an opportunity to share and reach thousands every week. All of us do. And I pray that we're all learning to be more hungry for God that David Ray does not know at all. I'm hungry for more of revelation from heaven. I'm hungry for more of God in my life. You can pray that way and you will, re you will receive. Amen. For you shall be filled. Amen. If you're looking more righteousness, you will be filled. Amen. My cup's running over right now. Amen. Am I aggravated with some situations I cannot control? Jesus. I sure am. Jesus. But I'm I'm filled within me. Glory to God. I'm filled and overflowing with righteousness for him. Because I love him. Because yes. I've let go of a lot of stuff a lot of folks need to let go of. Yes. Oh, you want to be full? You know if you're full this morning and you know if you're half empty. And I ain't talking about fried chicken or barbecue or coleslaw. Yes. I'm talking about spiritual food. You know if you're hungry this morning. For more God, or you're lacking, or you've got your mind all tied up with somebody else, and you and you can't even churn because you're you're churning on the outside when you need to churn on the inside. You're so caught up with with having your eyes up and and looking at someone, you can't have your eyes down as Jesus was, and there was a multitude there. Your eyes are down. Fed on me, hit me, do whatever you want to do, but I'm focused and hungry for more of God. Yes, amen. And it'll stir you up on the inside. Yes, amen. All this stuff that's on the outside dealing with interferences from other folks will bring you personally down. Yes, it will. Yeah. Preaching. 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 Blessed are you who weep now. It talks about crying for spiritual weak. It's a spiritual for because you're spiritually weak. That's what this is speaking about. Blessed are you that mourn. You cry out to God for more spiritual strength. How many are how many have cried out to God this week for more spiritual strength? Jesus. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes. If you've not started crying, you better start today. Yes, Lord. Stop crying on your, over everybody else's boat and get your boat right. Yes, Lord. Yes. Because if you get your boat right, you'll survive when they're gone. Yes. <laughs> if your boat is connected to other people, you won't sail too good when they're gone. Because you'll feel left out and empty. Yes. But when you're in God, you're never lonely. Jesus. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit of God, there's never a bored time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I want to weep now. We need some weepers in here this morning. We need some people to 
weep for more of God. You've cried enough over your children. You've cried enough over your family members. You've cried enough over your co-workers. It's time now to cry for more of God. I didn't get an amen because I hit, I hit a sore spot up in here, up in here. I'm going to tell you something before I move on. Here, and I'm at verse 21, Luke 6. I'm going to tell you something. My days here are, are to help every one of you, including those in the back right now. And I hope they can hear me. Amen. My days are to help you and, and, and help the thousands that watch us every week. Amen. Yes. Yes. It's time we stop putting band-aids on real problems. Yes. It's time to get in God so we can be blessed. Yes. And it's not external, it is internal. Yes. It's not external, it's internal. Because if you're internally connected, others can't bring you down. They can aggravate you. Mm -hmm. yes, but, but, but when you are spiritually fed with the Word of God, you can face anything that comes from the atmosphere outside of your body and win in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. Verse 22. Blessed are you Happy are you when men shall hate you. Mm. 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 I, could, I, could, I could probably take this one and take this verse 22, mm -hmm. put it in big letters and take it to my back. Put it and, and, and make me a shirt in it. Blessed are you, happy are you, when men shall hate you. That ain't only men, that's women too. You women, you think you get away with a lot of stuff. Because it says men, it means women too. It's for you women too. Women. And when they shall separate you from their company. Woo, when you're operating in the fullness of God. People are not wanting to hang around you long if the Spirit of God is operating in you. Come on, somebody. Yeah. They can't stand it. They will separate themselves for, from you unless you're acting like they're acting. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is what the Word says. Jesus. Luke chapter 6, verse 22. This ain't what some psychology book said. Mm -hmm. Blessed are you when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake. Jesus. Those who subscribe to the cross will be treated accordingly. If you're living in the cross of Jesus Christ, you will be hated. Jesus. Verse 22. Luke chapter 6. You may say, why does he say that so much? Because I know the tension spans of people and I know the online audience after six years. You need to repeat the scriptures more than one time or barely say it. Go tell them a story. You need to repeat the scriptures throughout your whole message. You want people to take the scripture home, not your best story from your life. You want them to carry the word of God home, not your favorite story that you think sounded good. And that goes for David Ray too. I'm telling it like it is. You will be hated for sticking to the word of God. If you've got people that won't mess with you, you're blessed. That's true. That's true. You're blessed. And, 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 and then you'd say in your mind, in the flesh, I'm so sad. They don't like me no more. That's one less problem you got to deal with. Yeah. 
That's one less problem you've got to deal with. Come on, somebody. Wake up. That's why I'm very careful how I answer my phone. He was ringing this morning at 5 a.m. from Africa. You better text me if you want to talk to me. There's a messenger. It's called Type. You're not going to get me on the phone and take up 20 minutes of my time. My time is valuable. Ask my wife. I'm going to go from the time I get up to I roll. I got a, I got a time limit on everything. I'm six minutes, five to six minutes sitting in the parking lot before I walk in my part-time job. Why? Because I'm organized. They'll hate you. They'll talk about you. They won't invite you to the, 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 the bang, bang that might be happening this afternoon with your family members. They don't even call you anymore like they used to call you. Because they hate you. Because you told God. Don't get all upset. Rejoice. Blessed are you. Happy are you. When men shall hate you. When women shall hate you. When women shall hate you. I got some women that hate me. Because I told them the truth. I had some men that hate me because I told them the truth. I didn't embarrass them publicly. I could have went to thousands and embarrassed them. Because we have the platforms to do it. But I didn't. I went to them privately. Tony Dane. But I couldn't take correction. So they hate me now. But they're in church every Sunday. Talking about me. Come on, somebody. I'm rejoicing in what I do for God. I'm rejoicing in what I do for my Savior. I'm not bought and paid for by folks. Glory to God. You want a bunch of friends, you can have them. I want Jesus this morning. I want Jesus Christ. You can have them because you feel lonely and feel rejected. I'm not lonely. I'm not rejected today. I've got Jesus Christ. If none of you go with me, I'll go alone this morning. And I'll tell you what, he'll discipline you. And we ain't got time to go there today. Let's go on to verse 23. You're you finding out, man, who's blessed and who isn't? Mm -hmm. Rejoice ye in that day. Mm. Rejoice ye. That means talking to you. Rejoice in that day, folks. Mm -hmm. I don't see no, I don't, I have not seen anyone yet stand up and do a little prance. Mm -hmm. I ain't seen no one stand up and feel released in God. I'm rejoicing because you're burdened. Are you scared of what someone else is going to say? Rejoice ye in that day when they hate you. When they talk about you. When you're, when you're crying after more God. You're hungry after more God. Rejoice. But you know why? That we can't rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. Leap means... You know why? Because we're so burdened with external problems yes. that we're trying to control mm -hmm. and we need to get our internal life right with God and it's not right with God. Amen. Amen. Then you can live in victory. Even when folks are aggravating you and they get on your nerves, you can still live in victory even if it's your family members you love with all your heart. You can still rejoice and do a leap. That's what the Word says. I'm not saying, I'm not saying anything to you today that's not the Word of God. It says the leap.
If, if I was to tell you right now to write on a sheet of paper what you're thinking about and hand it to you, how many could do it in all honesty? If I asked you right now what you're thinking about and, and to write it on a sheet of paper, hand it to me, how many of you could do it? How many could do it? Raise your hands. It's not on. How many could do it? Praise God. Praise God, you're free. Praise God. Praise God, you're free. You're free. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. When others are coming at you, you're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. Cause you're free. Thank you, Jesus. And all that stuff that you would have written on that sheet of paper that does not have anything to do with this message, that's your problem. Those people are your problem. What you were just thinking about, and I asked you to write it down, what was going through your mind. Those people are your hindrances. The, those folks are holding you back from a great move of God for your own life. You can't walk in blessings if you want to walk in the mud puddle the rest of your life. You can't walk in the fullness of the Holy Ghost if you want to keep getting your feet muddy and dirty with other folks' problems. I want my feet clean. I don't want to walk in the mud puddles with other folks. It's time they grow up and get right with God and so they can walk in blessings. You put up with their mess long enough. Amen. You put up with their mess long enough. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Preach it. The sermon on the plane. I'll read this, and this is the conclusion. I'll read these verses again, and we'll conclude today. Thank you for not throwing apples, tomatoes, or the nice decorations that are in every window that are very nice and done by a beautiful woman. It's looking younger every day. Yes. Amen. Thank you for not throwing the decorations or throwing chairs. Yes. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be the poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that are humble this morning. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now. That means hunger after righteousness. For you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now. Because you're weak spiritually. You've not been reading your Bible enough. But for you shall laugh in due time. Yes. Come on then. Blessed are you when men shall hate you. When they shall separate you from their company. And shall reproach you. And cast you out. Your name is evil. For the Son of Man's sake. Amen. Rejoice ye in that day. Mm -hmm. And leap for joy. Come on. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. Yes, Lord. Amen. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. The closer Thank you, Lord. you get with God, the less friends you're going to have. Amen. 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 The closer you get to the cross of Calvary, the less friends you're going to have. The closer walk with God, the more people are going to hate you. Come on now, preach. But you got to put on, ladies, if you're wearing pants, put on the big girl pants. Men, you need to put on your big boy pants. Put on your big boy pants and say, I stand for God. I stand for God. Yes. Yes. But I'm blessed because I'm serving Him. 
I'm living for it. I'm one blessed person. You are one blessed person. Yes, Lord. I'm blessed because of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Honey, cut us off. God loves you and I love you. I got to talk to the folks. Bye-bye. God bless you, man.